Yeah. Hello everybody. Today let's learn a little bit about dengue fever in children. So dengue is a mosquito-borne viral disease that has spread to all the regions of the world in the recent years and India is certainly an endemic country. Dengue is caused by four viruses of the dengue family, then V1, 2, 3 and 4 serotypes. So usually infection from infection and recovery from one type of serotype confers lifelong immunity against that serotype but not the other three serotypes. And usually a secondary infection from a different serotype always leads to a risk of developing a more serious clinical course. And coming to transmission of dengue, dengue is transmitted to humans from the bite of an infected female Aedes aegypti mosquito. So these Aedes aegypti mosquitoes are day breeders, day biters. So they bite children during the day that is most commonly early in the morning and in the evening just before sunset. And these Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, they breed in populated urban areas where there is clear water stagnating. So that is drain, AC drain pipes or uh, water bodies and tires and stormwater drains. And uh, the most common uh, season for this breeding of Aedes mosquitoes are from in the rainy season from July to November. There is some evidence of maternal transmission of dengue that is from a pregnant mother to the fetus. So this happens when the mother is infected with dengue close to the delivery and uh, this causes, uh, sometimes it might cause low birth weight and preterm birth and respiratory issues in the newborn after birth, though rare it has been reported. And when to suspect dengue fever in your child? So the symptoms usually start after an incubation period of 4 to 10 days after the bite of an Aedes mosquito. And the clinical course of dengue is there is has three phases. So one is the febrile phase between 2 to 7 days. And then is the critical phase which lasts for about 24 to 48 hours and the third is a convalescent phase which lasts for about 2 to 3 days. Now coming to symptoms in the febrile phase, this uh, starts with very high fever in children, a sudden rapid spike of temperature that might go up to 104 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit and is usually accompanied by two to three of the following symptoms. So it can cause vomiting in children, severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, severe headache, so pain behind the eyes and muscle and joint pains. These muscle and joint pains are so severe that dengue is also called a breakbone fever. And this uh, febrile phase lasts for about 2 to 7 days in children where they might be fever every day or the fever may be biphasic. That is the fever comes for about 2 to 3 days then the fever breaks and the fever recurs again after a 2 day break. Coming to the critical phase, uh, the blood in the, the fluid in the blood also called as the plasma leaks to the extracellular spaces in the body like the lung spaces or the abdominal space leading to severe complications in children like hypotension or low blood pressure or pulmonary edema or which causes uh, breathing problems or shortness of breath and if the fluid leaks into the abdomen, it causes swelling of the abdomen or abdominal distension. This critical phase lasts for about 24 to 48 hours and here is when most uh, children do present to the hospital. Some warning signs that parents should look for during this phase that is when you should visit a hospital are when there is severe abdominal pain, when there is persistent vomiting and the child cannot accept any oral fluids or feeds or when there is rapid breathing or when there are cold, clammy extremities, mottling of skin. These are all signs of shock. When there is restlessness, fatigue, the child is irritable, drowsy and not their normal sensorium. When there is liver enlargement or child complains of severe abdominal pain. Another common symptom in the critical phase is bleeding. So bleeding from all mucosas, that is bleeding from the gums or bleeding from the nose, blood in the vomitus or blood in the stools is seen as black tarry stools instead of bright red. So this is called occult blood in the stool or what we call as melina. So in case of any of these symptoms, it is always best to visit to the hospital in the critical phase of dengue. 
most children in this phase do present with a rash so this rash is seen over the extremities it is seen as small red dots that we call petechiae and this is seen all over the hands and legs with some areas of normal skin in between when we press this rash over the child's uh, hands or legs it does not blanch it stays red so this is this rash is called petechiae and is present in the critical phase most commonly the fall of platelets is seen in the critical phase of dengue but this has seldom this has very little to do with the bleeding and then coming to the convalescent phase this is the recovery phase this starts after at about 6 to 7 days after the start of fever and around 48 hours after the critical phase so this phase lasts for around 2 uh, to 3 days where the blood that has leaked into the extra the plasma that has leaked into the extracellular spaces comes back into the intracellular space and signs and symptoms signs and symptoms in the child improves so in this phase also the children can present with a rash but this rash is all over the body and when we press the child's hand it blanches so this is this rash can also be itchy this is in a way a good sign that is the child is recovering so, so monitoring in the convalescent phase is also as important as monitoring in the critical phase now coming to the laboratory diagnosis of dengue mainly diagnosed in the first 4 years of illness by something called as a dengue ns1 antigen so this is a glycoprotein of the virus that is present within the infected person's blood and it can be detected from the first 4 days of fever and if the child presents on day 5 or day 6 of fever we do something called as a dengue igm elisa so this is a pro, this is an antibody that starts on day 5 or 6 of the fever and is present up to the first 60 days of illness so this can also indicate a recent infection with dengue coming to treatment like most viruses there is no specific treatment for dengue the treatment is always supportive and symptomatic so the child should have adequate rest adequate hydration and seek acute medical care when in the acute period so uh, the hydration is through plenty of oral fluids oral rehydration solutions and if the child is breastfed it is always advisable to continue breastfeeding and uh, in the febrile phase the mainstay of treatment is trying to reduce the temperature so antipyretics can be given like paracetamol but uh, some antipyretics like ibuprofen are best avoided because they cause gastritis and it can worsen the abdominal pain that is present in the child tepid sponging can be done every 4 to 6 hours along with paracetamol to reduce the fever and when to come to a hospital so uh, when the child is not in a normal sensorium when an active child suddenly becomes irritable or becomes drowsy or restless listless that is when we should consult when we should come to the hospital when a child is not accepting any oral fluids cannot take feeds or even breast milk properly that is when you should come to the hospital and intravenous fluids can be started when the child is uh, persistent vomiting or abdominal pain or in case of any bleeds any mucosal bleeds from the lips gums nose or in the blood so this is these are called warning signs and this is when we should consult the hospital so platelet transfusion as such there are no role for a, a routine platelet transfusion in case of dengue platelet transfusion is only done when the platelets fall below 10000 or in case of bleeding below 50000 so as of now vaccines for dengue there are no vaccines for dengue some vaccines have been um, administered in different countries but the government of india has no vaccine for dengue so prevention is always better than cure in case of dengue so the main stay of prevention will be eliminating the areas of breeding for the aedes aegypti mosquito so any a uh, clear stagnant water must be removed covered cleaned acs should be uh, the ac water should be emptied very frequently and then water in the flower pots should not be left stagnant because these are the most common areas where the aedes mosquito breeds and then uh, coming to personal protection 
since this is a day biter so sending the children to school with fully covered uh, clothes is the mainstay of treatment and then uh, mosquito nets the window screens repellents coils etc things to be considered day biting mosquito so always the children who sleep during the day should be covered adequately with mosquito nets Yeah, so that's a good question. Somebody has asked, can dengue fever spread to saliva? So dengue is not transmitted from one person to another. Dengue is only transmitted through the bite of an infected mosquito. Now, if this infected mosquito bites a person with dengue virus and then goes on to bite another person that way the infection is spread so it cannot spread from one person to another through contact either saliva or any bodily fluid <laughs> 